Okay, let's get this day started. Good morning. Let me get my attendance showing right quick. Miss Moreno just came in. Okay. All right, it is 9.05. Uh, hopefully more students will show up and hop in as uh, class progresses. But since it's 9.05, we're gonna go ahead and just get things rolling. Hopefully they'll get up to speed uh, while they're in here. Uh, again, good morning, Rosalind. Uh, Rosalinda, excuse me. And we're gonna take a look at the <clears throat> at Canvas right quick. So let me share my screen. Okay, as you can see here, we got our Canvas at the home page, our daily reminder, which is to always check your announcements and calendar. So we're gonna swing over here to the announcement section, which can be found over here on the left side. Click that. And you may notice that I have a new announcement posted. It is the unit three cycle one vocabulary. You click that, you can find your list of vocabulary words all on the left side, the correct pronunciation uh, next to it. Then in the middle, you have the definitions or the meanings of those vocabulary words. And at the far right, you have a sentence using each of those words correctly in the sentence. Um, let me see, Maja just came in, let them in right quick. Kevin Mays that just came in. Good morning, y'all. Make sure I get y'all on for attendance right quick. Kevin just came in. And Maje. Lister just came in. Okay. All right, let's get back to Canvas. Again, you may find these vocabulary words in the announcement section. Let's go to the announcement section here and it should be listed at the very top, unit three, cycle one vocabulary. This is the vocabulary for this, um, this cycle that we're going over. All right, next, since we looked at the announcement section, let's look over at the calendar. For today's class, we have, what's today, uh, the 12th? So let's click SFA class. We see all the information to get in the class when class starts, the Zoom meeting information. Uh, the reading for today will be The Whipping Boy, pages 12 through 22. And we have a bell work and team discussion. So if we look at the bell work for today, for January 12th of 2021, uh, I ask you to list each vocabulary word, which can be listed down here or seen down here. Then type the symbol response seen in the box to the right beside each listed word. So this box right here, this little key. Instead of typing a check mark, however, you may type the backslash symbol. That's the slash symbol seen right there. So <clears throat> for when you're writing the words, first off, you list all eight of them. Then beside them, you think of each word and wonder if you know this word and you can use it, then you put a plus mark right beside it. Uh, if this word looks familiar, it has something to do with something that you cannot quite remember or you kind of sort of remember, you instead of putting a check mark again, as it says up here, instead of a check mark, I want y'all to put the backslash symbol because uh, I don't know about y'all's uh, keyboards, but mine doesn't have a, a check mark. 
uh, key on there or button to press. Uh, and lastly, if you don't know the word that's listed over here and it's totally new to you, then beside it, you would type the question mark symbol. Okay, the question mark symbol and the backslash symbol are basically the same button. You just hit shift and then you hold shift, excuse me, then press that backslash button to get to the question mark. Okay, so after you hit submit assignment, you know, you'd list each word. You don't even have to number them if you don't want to. But you list each word. Uh, and all that. Dreadful, that's an important word. So on and so forth. And beside it, if you know the word, you put a plus. If it looks familiar, but you're not quite sure, you put that backslash. And if you do not know the word, it's completely new to you, then you'd put the question mark, okay? Easy peasy. And after you do that for all the words, you hit submit assignment. And that was the, the bell work <clears throat> for today. Um, well, we're going to go ahead and hop into reading Ed so we can get to reading uh, the whipping boy, okay? Though I do want y'all to keep in mind the team discussion and the team discussion questions. So we'll take a little quick look at that. You have five questions up here. Uh, the question one asks, when the prince and Jimmy run away, what problems do they have? Question two, why doesn't Jimmy want the outlaws to learn the prince's real identity? This might be a little spoilers. Um, question three, write a question about something you read today in the story, then answer the question and tell whether it is right there or a think question and why. Uh, question four, how does the prince almost ruin Jimmy's plan for escape? And you support your answer with evidence from the text. And question five is, what is a synonym for the word dreadful? Uh, who in here knows what the word synonym means? <clears throat> Anybody? Kevin, do you know? Something that is like, like the word, but in uh, a different definition? Yep. It's, well, uh, the, kind of the same definition, but you, you're basically right, though. It's a, a different word, but the same definition is like if I say the word big, what's a, semin a synonym for the word big, uh, Kevin? Uh, tall? Yep, tall. Somebody's really big, they might be really tall or large or giant or huge or something like that. So that's basically what synonym means, like a different word, but the same meaning. But so uh, keep in mind the word dreadful will probably come through in the meaning, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the reading. All right, well, let me stop sharing here. Next, I'm gonna go over to the reading edge. As you see, this is the bell work, you know, rate the vocabulary words, but we already went over that in Canvas. We have the list of vocabulary words. We're not gonna do the set the stage, but again, we're on cycle one, uh, use questioning for the book, The Whipping Boy. And the reading objective is to use questioning strategies to check comprehension. So asking ourselves questions to kind of make sure we understand what we're reading, okay? So we're gonna turn to pages 12 to 22, which I'll be basically doing that and reading the book uh, text to y'all. And, you know, just try to follow along. And if y'all have any questions about anything I'm reading, feel free to stop me, okay? All right. So next, let me stop sharing. <clears throat> I'm gonna put my screen to speaker view. Hope y'all can see everything okay. Bring it down here to the book. Let me flip it over again to Sid Fleischman's The Whipping Boy. And again, we're on pages 12, starting from 12, going to page 22, okay? 
try your best to, to follow along so we can get this reading done and then we can get back to the questions, okay? All right. Chapter five, hold your nose, Billy, and cut water. Okay. <clears throat> Billy pulled Prince Brat from the saddle and threw him into Jimmy. Raising the lantern, the man held it close enough that Jimmy could feel the heat of the flame. Billy was a big man. He saw big and raw, <clears throat> excuse me, he was a big man he saw, big and raw <clears throat> as a skinned ox. Excuse me, I need to drink some water. My throat's kind of raspy. And he smelled like a ton of garlic. Not much of a catch, two sparrows, said Billy. But they ain't trimmed up in fancy rags, cut water. But ain't they trimmed up in fancy rags? Ain't they, echoed the rattlebone man. Got any gold in your pockets, lads? No business of yours, snapped the prince. Ah, but so help me, it is my business, Billy said with a thunderclap of laughter. Don't you know who I am? A clod and a ruffian, declared the prince. Worse than that, corrected the big man. Ain't you never heard of Hold Your Nose, Billy? Famous he is, put in Cutwater. Put to song is Billy. Jimmy thought he remembered. Hadn't he heard ballad sellers fling that name about the streets? The exploits of Hold Your Nose, something or other, and verses by the yard? The highwayman, are you? The same, the murderer, only in the line of duty. Hold Your Nose, Billy chuckled. So you won't mind if we take your horse and empty your pockets. Not a copper between us, said Jimmy. A prince didn't carry money for he had no use for it. And Jimmy's accounts were kept on the books. What's in this basket? Piped up Cutwater. Hands off, villain, snapped Prince Brat. Don't you know who I am? Jimmy gave the prince a sudden jab of his elbow to keep his mouth shut. Not a word, but the heir to the throne raised himself to his full height. Bow to your prince. Fog swirled around the lantern. Bow to what? Asked Cutwater. I am Prince Horace, and I am the grand turnip of China, Cutwater snickered. Dim-witted villains, shouted the prince. I command you to turn us loose or Papa will hang. A pair of you in chains. Hold your trap, Jimmy thought. Don't you have a thimble of brains? A prince would make a fine catch for these rogues. Me friends muddle-headed, he declared. His paw's nothing but a rat catcher. But don't he put on airs, though? Got enough lip for two sets of teeth, trotted the big highwayman. Cut water, take the lantern and fetch the horse. What do you reckon is in the basket, Billy? Plenty of time to find out. The lantern floated off. The evil smelling Billy clutched each boy hard by the ear. Stir your legs, walk, and don't let me catch you on our turf again. Do I make myself clear? Clear as window glass, said Jimmy with a sigh of relief. If you'd be kind enough to point us toward the river, I'd ever be so much obliged. Billy, came a shout from Cutwater. They ain't just common sparrows. Have a look at this saddle. Hold your nose, Billy hung on to the boy's ears. At the horse's side, Cutwater was holding the lantern close to the saddle. Skin me alive, declared the big man in awe. That's the king's own crest. We stole it, horse and saddle, Jimmy put in desperately. Bosh, retorted P Prince Brat scornfully. Didn't I tell you who I was? Bow low, you fools, and be off. But the two men neither bowed nor fled. Hold your nose, Billy, threw a bushy-eyed glance at his fellow outlaw. Cutwater, 
What do you reckon a genuine prince on the hoof is worth? His weight in gold, at least, Billy. Chapter six, <clears throat> in which the plot thickens. Wisps of fog clung like tattered rags to the trees and then the forest cleared. But so thick were the pines that the morning sun barely touched the ground. Hold your nose, Billy, pushed aside a low branch revealing a rickety timbered hut with a moldy thatched roof. There's our castle, your young majesty, he said chuckling. Accept our hospitality. I hope you won't mind sleeping on the floor. The floor was hard packed earth. Braided garlic bulbs hung like knotted ropes from the rafters. I'm hungry, announced Prince Brad. And feast you will, said Hold Your Nose Billy. Cut water, serve them up our finest bread and herring. Jimmy had made many a meal on bread and herring when he was in luck and felt hungry enough to ask for seconds. Prince Brat bared his teeth. I'd sooner eat mud. He reached for the wicker basket, but Cutwater snatched it back. What we got here, muttered the bone thin man and threw back the lid. Roll your eyes at this, Billy. Meat pies, looks like, and fruit tarts. And a brace of roast pheasant. We'll eat like kings. Hands off, that's mine, the prince cried out. Was yours, yapped Cutwater. Locks, Jimmy thought. Hadn't the prince run away in royal style? He had even brought a china plate, a silver spoon, and a silver knife for himself. Digging around deeper in the basket, the garlicky outlaw called out to cut water. Bring the lantern closer. What's this? In the gloom of the hut, the big man lifted out a golden crown. Y'all can see right here is like a picture of him. You got a uh, Jimmy, you got uh, the prince. And I'm not sure which one is uh, cut water and which one is uh, Billy. I'm assuming that's a uh, hold your nose because you kind of got a big one, and that's probably him. All right. Everybody following along so far? All right, great. We shouldn't be too far from finishing up. That's mine, bleated the prince. Was yours, corrected hold your nose, Billy placing the crown on the tangled red nest of his hair. Prince Hold Your Nose Billy, Cutwater burst out joyously. He began to scratch himself as if his shirt were crawling with fleas, which Jimmy thought it probably was. We're dog rich. That crown? A trifle, scoffed Hold Your Nose Billy. We can be richer in dog rich. The empty-headed prince, Jimmy thought, why had he brought along his crown to cock it on his head and expect vagabonds and cutthroats to fall to their knees? The big raw-faced outlaw grabbed Prince Brat off the ground and took the heft of him as if he were weighing a sack of potatoes. 55 pounds by my reckoning, he said. We'll write the king a command, Cutwater. 55 pounds of gold coin in trade for his royal tadpole. Uh, Kevin, what do you think is going to happen next? You're not sure? All right, uh, Dimaje Lister, what do you think is gonna happen next? Help Kevin out. Uh, I think um, that the people are gonna have to, I mean, the king's gonna have to give the money to get his son back. 
Right, that's what it looks like because it seems like they're about to put him up for ransom or they like kidnap him. Uh, Rosalinda, you think it was a good idea for um, the prince to bring his crown with him and all that food and stuff? Well, maybe not the food, but you think it was a good idea for the prince to bring his crown? Um, I'm not sure. Would you have brought uh, the crown with you? Rosalind? Say that again. Would you have brought the crown with you if you were the prince? I would have left it behind because it would have made a much less weight to carry. Yep. It seems like it would have been a good idea to leave it. All right, let's uh, continue to read so we can go ahead and finish up. Chapter seven, being an account of a great mix-up. Cutwater rummaged around in a black oak chest of stolen goods. Handkerchiefs flew out like soiled white doves, worn shoes, ladies' combs, a cowbell, a junkie. They've had lean pickings, this raggedy pair of highwaymen, Jimmy thought, and maybe not as smart and clever as the song sellers made out. Here's a scrap of paper, Billy, said Cutwater, finding it in the pocket of a stolen coat. But how are we going to do the scribblement? We can't write. I've seen it done. Sharpen us a hawk's feather, Cutwater. I'm hungry, complained the prince. I'll have a veal pie, sir. Hold your nose, Billy ignored him. He poked around for a beetroot and squeezed out the juice with his bare hand. It dripped like blood onto a china plate. There's ink for you, Prince. Take the hawk's feather and scratch out our message. Prince Brat folded his arms. I don't take orders from curs and villains. Think of your pa, said Hold Your Nose Billy. He'll be ever so much obliged to know you're safe and hearty. I told you I'm hungry. You won't eat a bean till you do us the document. But I can't write, blurted out Prince Brat. And crows can't fly, erupted the big outlaw with a blast of garlicky breath. You're a prince. Kings and such like are learned to write and read soon as they tumble out of the cradle. Don't think you can pull the wool over our eyes. Hop to it. But I can't so much as scratch my own name. Jimmy shot a calculating glance at Prince Brat. His pesky hide hardly seemed worth a saving, but a scheme had leaped into his head. He might be able to trick these mangy outlaws into letting the prince go and Jimmy would be rid of the prince brat once and for all. Give me the hawk's quill. I'll write the words, he announced. That's right, prince brat chimed in. My whipping boy knows his letters. Fall to Jimmy from the streets. Hold on, said hold your nose Billy, his sharp gaze flicking from one boy to the other. This ignorant whipping boy knows his letters and the royal prince can't sign his own name? Something's amiss here. What you thinking, Billy? Asked Cutwater. I'm thinking these lads have mixed themselves up to flummox us. Jimmy lifted his chin arrogantly and tried to look as prince-like as possible. Nonsense, I'm a mere whipping boy. The big man rumbled up and laughed showing a <clears throat> showing a mouthful of yellow teeth. You can take us for bedrock numbskulls. Certain as eggs is eggs, you're the uh, prince, the genuine straight up and down royal highness. The prince's brat's face turned red as hot iron. That ratty street orphan, he bellowed. That lowborn silence, Jimmy commanded. Can't you see the game is up? They're on to us. Hold your tongue. 
but I'm his royal highness. Gaw, Jimmy thought. This haughty prince didn't have the sense of a gnat. Couldn't he see a plan afoot? Save your breath, snapped Jimmy. Stop giving us, stop giving yourselves airs, you witless servant boy. The last page, y'all. Servant boy, how dare you address me? Bag your head, snap, hold your nose, Billy. Give him a kick, Cutwater, if he, if we hear another peep out of him. Hand me the hawk's feather, said Jimmy. I'll write my pa, the king, my papa, the king. And next is uh, chapter eight, but we're going to start right there, all right? We're page 22 ends. Hope everybody followed along carefully. All right, let me unpin this image. Change the gallery view right quick. All right, and I'll share my screen again. All right, so again, for the team discussion, we had the questions, uh, when the prince and Jimmy run away, what problems did they have? Uh, Rosalinda, what's a, a problem that the prince and Jimmy had after running away? Rosalinda? Say it again. I think you like unmuted and muted again. I'm not really sure. Uh, I guess they their plan for being uh, switched uh, went badly. Yep. That's a problem they had. Um, they had a lot of problems. But yep, that's one. Uh, question two, why doesn't Jimmy want the outlaws to learn the prince's real identity? Um, Kevin, what do you think is the reason why the why Jimmy didn't want them to learn who the prince was before they found out who he was? Uh, because they don't want to uh, steal uh, everything from him. Right. Because, uh huh. Right. Um, basically, Jimmy knew that they were like outlaws and stuff. They're bandits, thieves. Um, Jimmy had already heard like those guys are like murderers and stuff like that. Or the guy, I think the guy told him they were murderers. But, you know, if you're out with like somebody famous or rich that has a lot of money and is known to have a lot of money and you go near some bandits, would you want like the bandits to know that this person got, like with you has like a ton of money? Because, you know, obviously they'll probably just, you know, rob him. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not a good idea. You want to make yourself seem like pretty low key so you can just go on about your business. If they don't know you got money, they're not going to try to take your money, right? Uh, question three, write a question about something you read today in the story. That's any question if you uh, were wondering something and then you kind of figured it out. You know, you can type the question and then uh, answer the question and tell whether it is the a right there or a think question. Um, four, how does the prince almost ruin Jimmy's plan for escape? So when Jimmy's trying to, you know, uh, come up with a plan to like leave and all that, how is like the prince like getting in the way of uh, Jimmy's plan? And um, five, uh, what is a synonym for the word dreadful? Now for five, let's take a look at the word dreadful right quick. Again, um, let's see, Damage, where can we find our vocabulary words list? What do you mean by that? 
Remember, I had a, a list of vocabulary words. Where did I put the vocabulary words in Canvas? I don't know. Okay, you might not have been here. Uh, Rosalinda, do you remember? Didn't you send out a message about that? Yep. Remember, daily reminder, always check your announcements and calendar. So I put the vocabulary words in the announcement section. So this is where you can find unit three, cycle one vocabulary. And the word for the team discussion was dreadful, which is also a vocabulary words. Dreadful means it's something that's very bad. Okay, a little sample uh, sentence uh, with it says, I felt dreadful for a week when I caught the flu. Okay, so dreadful means really bad. They felt really bad. What's a, a synonym for the word dreadful, uh, Rosalinda? Sad. Uh, kind of, sort of, yep. If you're feeling sad, you're feeling very bad. So, yep. Any uh, synonym that you could think of that also means very bad? So any word that means very bad, that's a synonym for dreadful. And that'll be um, the answer for uh disappointed what'd you say kamari disappointed um it's kind of specific but you're kind of close um okay. let's say like the wet for is dreadful so like the weather if the weather is dreadful it means like it's very bad or um this food that I'm eating tastes dreadful. That means very bad. So um, disappointment is kind of close, but think of another word that means very bad. What's another word you can think of, uh, Kamari, that means very bad? I don't know. Okay. All right, let's see if you eat some like nasty food. Instead of saying the food is very bad, what would you say? The food tastes what? Disgusting. Could be, yep. That could be a, that could be a, a synonym. Disgusting, uh, terrible, awful. All these are um, synonyms, okay? So if it means very bad, that's a synonym for the word dreadful. All right, and that's how you'd answer question five. All right, those are all the team discussion uh, questions for today. Uh, another thing I want to remind y'all before I let y'all go, let's go to the home section in Canvas. Now, uh, actually, I didn't post that on there. Let me post that right quick. I thought I did, but apparently I did not. Okay, there we go. It was hidden for some reason. All right, in the home section on Canvas, you know where you have all those Zoom room and YouTube links? Also in here, before we get to the YouTube link, I have a message for y'all to remember. Be sure to subscribe, to subscribe to the YouTube channel to view the videos. Now, all the YouTube channel videos are gonna be private, okay? So if you miss a class and need to go back and see it, you have to be sure you're subscribed to that channel to view it. If you're not subscribed, you can't watch the video, okay? Now, why they have to be private is for like privacy reasons, you know, from y'all parents and stuff like that. They might not want y'all be all over YouTube, whatever, for any reason. So if you subscribe to it, then you'll be able to view it. If you're not, then you can't view the YouTube videos, okay? So be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you have any trouble, you may need to ask your parents or your guardians or uh, older brother, older sister, anybody that can, might help you. But do that so you can watch the YouTube videos, okay? All right. Other than that, that's it for class for today. It's a pretty short class. Um, I'll see y'all tomorrow, okay?